<laughs> God. I... All right. So how do we, what do we do? <laughs> All right. We're live. Okay. Hey, if everybody can see us now, just write, hey, coach, we see you now. Because I'm the biggest. Uh, it was a nice. We've literally been. The... <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So we've been on for 12 minutes talking to ourselves. Man, we were to good, ourselves. Though. If people can see us, we were so good. If you can see us, just write yes in the chat for us, please. And then I'll, I'll tell you what uh, we there see we you go. now. All right. Yeah. So here's the deal. I forgot to hit the live button. I forgot to hit the live button. So we hit the open, and then I didn't hit the live button. So here's what's happening, everybody. And I apologize. Zach says, Coach, is fastly late. Yes. Um, I'm producing for the very first time. And, of course, I'm an idiot. And we said here we did 12 minutes of content without all of you. And I thought you guys were very, very nice into the chat. We see you now. We see you now. Hey, Coach, we see you. Very fantastic. All right, let me start this over. We are the boys from DTL Golf. Yeah. He is Steve Scott. I am the coach. <laughs> and we called the Genesis today. We called Tiger Woods first start in 2024. So that was a nice little, uh, I guess, preview. And now I know I actually have to hit that live button when the <laughs> open is done. So there we go. If you guys have any questions for us, put them into the chat. We will answer them for you in real time. Now. Steve Scott, Tiger Woods, let's start there right at the top of the show here. And today he had a little bit of good. He had a little bit of bad. Six bogeys, five birdies, one over 72. What did you make of Tiger Woods? Well, there were three big takeaways, really, for my round with Tiger. And, and, and watching him today, and let's start at the first one. It's all about getting in competition as much as humanly possible. And I know it's very difficult for him. We're going to see him maybe once a month throughout the year, assuming his uh, his health stays good. But what happens when you get into competition, and I don't care if it's golf or whatever competition you're in, all the energy that this crowd offers these players right now, the adrenaline starts going. And what happens when your adrenaline really kicks up? Things go very quickly, number one, in your head. And number two, your distance control. You have these superhuman powers when you have adrenaline. So the the ability to control distance was really off for Tiger today. He left a lot of shots very short into the front bunkers. He missed his yardage by 20 yards at times, which really threw him off. He was 10 for 18 in greens hit and regulation, 54th in strokes gained approach. That's not Tiger Woods. Tiger is perennially an amazing iron player. Distance control was really off for him today. He played the par fours, by the way, six over par, and he only shot one over. So if he cleans some of those par fours up a little bit with those distance controls, he's going to be right on the money tomorrow. Yeah, Wags in the chat says, Tiger took a lot of notes today. I'm thinking he goes three under or better tomorrow. Well, here, here's the thing. This golf course, we talked a lot about it on the pregame today. If you guys watched on PGA Tour Live, it's a faders golf course. But if you overfade, the par fours, Steve, are so long. Some are 460, 470, 480, True. that you lose a lot of distance. And then you've got to grab a club that has a head on it, a five wood, sometimes a three wood, and it's impossible to stop. And I really thought the Tiger got himself in some of those situations, as did his playing partner, Justin Thomas. But all in all, when you only played two official tournaments on the PGA Tour a year ago. The last one was the Masters. And you came out, I thought he he moved a lot better. I thought he smiled yeah. a lot. Certainly playing with Justin Thomas and Gary Woodland was a good thing. And seeing Gary Woodland out there was awesome. But was there any other takeaways from Tiger today? He's going to be playing one of the late tee times tomorrow. So as much as Wags and everybody else thinks he could go under par, understand this, today – the afternoon was much, much, much more difficult than the morning when Tiger teed off local time in L.A. So I don't know how good I feel about him tomorrow. But today, all in all, I thought he looked healthy. And when you make five birdies on this golf course, there's a lot of good to be had, Steve. A lot of good to be had. He, he really played some wonderful golf shots out there. And, and, you know, all, all in all, though, it, really what cost him getting up towards the, the top part of that leaderboard wasn't necessarily his ball strength, but it was his short game. His scrambling game was definitely off today. He was only two for eight in the scrambling department, and he was a big goose egg, zero of four out of the bunkers. And so if he just cleans that up a little bit, gets three more balls up and down, and that's only five of the eight that, that he would get up and down, he'd be two under par right now, and he would be tied for 15th place. Mm -hmm. And we'd be singing a whole different tune about Tiger's debut here 
today. So I, I really think that just a, he's very, very close. And this game is very, very tight. It's only three shots separates where Tiger is outside of the top 40 to tied for 15th. So there's not a, there's it's a very tightly packed bunch. Let me ask you this. If I said that uh, Tiger over or under 70 and a half tomorrow, it's a par 71. Would you take the over or would you take the under? Uh, you know what? I, I think I'd probably take the over only because later in the day, he's not going to hold as many putts. Not that he holds a ton of putts today, but uh, I, I think that uh, the greens are only going to get a little bit tougher. And he doesn't putt these greens very well. This this is a place that he is always behind the eight ball in putting. So I, I would say I would take the over tomorrow. Joey has a question uh, to Steve. He says, uh, is Tiger's rustiness mainly a feel thing that will come with more turning experience? I Yeah, Joey, great question. I, I think that totally that, that – it, look, it's one of these things when Tiger ha has all his injuries and his back just doesn't let him do everything that he wants to do. And, and his ankle getting on his feet, just that has uh, has taken a toll on him. So he cannot put in the work, you know, at his beautiful practice facility at his Jupiter Island home. He can't do all that that he used to do. And, and, and as a competitor, when you know what it took to get to the level that he played at for all of those years, and now you know you can't put in that work. There's something in the back of your head that says, yeah, you know what? Maybe I just I, I, I'm not where I was and I and I'll never get back there. And 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 his body is just not letting him do things. So, uh, yeah, that touch, I think, does come back a little bit with some tournament experience and he needs to clean that up a little bit. But it's just the work that he's not able to put in all the stuff that you don't see before he comes out to L.A. It's funny because you kind of tease next week's featured merch item at our merch store. It's going to be a shirt that, that says, do you want to do the work? That's going to be on Monday. You're teasing it. You're quite the marketer. You're quite the marketer. All right, let's get Love into it. some guys that um, Tigers played with first today. We'll, we'll hit a lot of guys, uh, a lot of questions there. Uh, Zach says, T got a rough spot today up against the netting. That was uh, that was kind of interesting that he, he banged it off the board. It went by, you know, seven or eight yards. And then he still had a really good look at par because he had a nice little draw in there. But he stumbled out of the blocks, and Michael Collins said on the broadcast with me, he made a good, interesting point. And I felt like an idiot because on this morning show, I picked Justin Thomas over Patrick Cantlay. I only lost that bet by eight shots. <laughs> but I remembered after I put the bet in that Cantlay has been starting strong this year, but fading on the weekend. And I had it in my head that JT was going to come out today, be fired up, ready to go. And then Michael Collins said this, and I was like, wah, wah, wah. He says every time that JT gets to tee it up with Tiger Woods, he wants so badly to play well against his mentor, his big brother, you know how he feels about Charlie, that he just tries too hard. And Steve, you know this, in the game of golf, if you try too hard, that's not necessarily a good thing. And so he was plus three for a lot of his round. He did get a couple back at the end, but he finished with a one over 72, same as Tiger. Uh, what did you make of JT's round today? Well, JT wants to beat Tiger so badly, and he knows that it. it's just somebody he's looked up to for forever. So uh, when when he doesn't get out there and perform the way he wants to, I mean, he knows he's having like a little, a little uh, you know, mini match out there, you know, a head-to-head -head match really with with his buddy that he plays with back at home and has given him a lot of advice over time. But yeah, I, I would say that that's correct. Uh, JT, he definitely, he has that in him. He just has a, he, you know, you have to have a, a care level kind of right in the middle. You can't care too much and try too hard. Uh, you can't do it too little either. It's sometimes it's tough to find that balance. JT has not quite found that balance yet playing with Tiger that much. Jeff says, love this. Thank you for having a show at night. We're going to be doing this a lot, not just on golf nights. We're going to be doing this a lot. Now, do not tell AB or our producers <laughs> because they just wrote this. Don't don't tell them this. Look at Coach hosting and producing. Uh, AB's in the chat. Don't tell them what happened the first 12 minutes, please. Please don't tell them how this thing started. Please, please don't. Just say we started on time. Say, hey, 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 Coach and Steve were great. They started on time. They're already, you know. 19 minutes in, 21 minutes in. Uh, now, Gary Woodland, really a feel-good story today as well. He shot the best round of the three. 
And he was a sponsor's exemption. If people don't know, he had brain surgery back in September. It was a six-hour surgery. I can't even imagine being a doctor to do that. And he just had a big old smile on his face. And I think that's the one thing, Steve, that we love about golf, whether it's Gary Woodland with a brain surgery or Will Zalatoris, who shot a 566. We love the redemption stories. We love the guys that go down, look like they're out, and they come all the way back up and tee it up again on the PGA Tour. Talk to me about Gary Woodland and one of your guys that you talked about on DTL Golf this week, Will Zalatoris. Well, Gary Woodland is is that great feel-good story, right? I mean, all the, the things that he has talked about in his comeback, he had that lesion on his brain that was really pressing on the part of his brain, which provided a, a lot extra anxiety. And he thought he was going to die every day. I mean, good heavens. So, I mean, the things that he has been through uh, and, and to get back to this point, uh, you know, Gary Woodland's one of the great guys. And Tiger gave him a sponsor exemption this week and allowed him to play in his group, too. So a uh, very, very cool thing. But Gary Woodland, he's one of the great guys out there on the tour. Uh, as Will Zalatoris, uh, he's a guy who was plus 5,000 to start. And Will was mm -hmm. one of my long shot picks on Tuesday at, at uh, 3 o'clock show. But, uh, you know, Will, I knew he was going to play well here. This ball strike, this is a, such a ball striking golf course is Riviera. And Will is really kind of dialed his ball striking in. Shot five under par out there today. He's made some tweaks in his iron play and uh, put the ball more forward in his stance, which allows him to take a little pressure off his back. And good on Will. It wouldn't surprise me if he was right there on Sunday. And because he's really figured out this long broomstick putter thing that uh, Lucas mm -hmm. Glover has done really well with and won last fall with, uh, Will Zalatoris has found his stroke on the greens, I think Will could be really dangerous. By the way, TJ, you know, Steve, when we asked the, the, the crew to take care of us and we asked the crew to say nothing, then TJ writes, Coach, is this the point you were at before you went live? I mean, if you really want to get down to the nitty-gritty, this is kind of the point that we were at before we decided that we hadn't gotten along. <laughs> uh, but we just got in to talking about some of the disappointments because when you talk about Rory McIlroy, and I mentioned this on the air today, and wasn't this weird, Steve, that normally whenever there's a tournament that has Rory and Scotty Scheffler, and maybe it was the fact that both those guys teed off in the later wave of tee times, because this wasn't a first and a tenth, because there's only 70 guys, they all teed off from the first, but it felt like Rory and Scotty were almost an afterthought. Now, Scotty always seems to be there. He has another three under ho-hum 68. Rory, when I picked him up on our main feed, he was two under par. But then his back nine looked like, like he was all over the place. He had a double bogey, backed that up with a triple bogey, did have a birdie at 17, but then he bogeyed 18 and came home with a three over par 7-4. So there's a cut. There's top 50 in ties, and you have to be within 10 shots of the lead as well. So he's 10 back right now after 18 holes. Was he your biggest disappointment? Because when I look at the leaderboard today, there was all of, count them, four players that Rory McIlroy beat in that entire field. Uh, yeah, then it really came down to that finish that he had with no question about it. It was a really a, a disastrous finish to his round. Uh, he had it going. He was three under par through 10 and uh, really could have put a good one on the board and absolutely went south. But uh, for Rory, it was a tale of, of two facets of his game. His driving, he was a stallion off the tee. I mean, he was second in strokes gained off the tee, second in distance. I mean, he bombed it down there like we know Rory does. But once he got close to the greens, it didn't turn right. He was dead last in strokes gained around the greens, 70th place, and 67th out of 70 in strokes gained putting. So you combine those things, and, and it's just a kind of a recipe for disaster right there. It was just uh, it was kind of an ugly finish, and but it was all around the greens that really cost him here today. All right, so let's start to look forward to tomorrow because I've got some redemption on the morning show because I've got to make a couple of round two picks. And I don't know where I'm going yet. I haven't looked at BetMGM or DraftKings. But let's just talk about a couple of players that maybe the crew can look at. And if you haven't hit that like button, please do that for, me, for us now. Um, that you think from what you saw today, Steve, on this stream that you were on, that you can look at tomorrow and say, listen, I think they could back up whatever round they shot today with a good round tomorrow. Because other than Cam Davis 
and Luke List. There's some really and, – and those guys have, you know, they've been successful on the tour, but I'm looking at the likes of Spieth, Zalatoris, Jay Day shot a six under day. You got Cantlay at seven. Is there a couple of guys that maybe you'll have your eye on tonight when you do your own personal handicapping? Well, Jason Day definitely had a great round out there today, six under par. Uh, he was a top 10 here last year, was Jason Day. So, uh, you know, he's got all that that cool uh, and but loose fitting Malbon golf uh apparel and 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 but he's uh, he's been pretty cool out there at the sun the shades kind of hanging out of his back pocket uh he feels pretty good around these parts and he didn't even birdie the first hole which is the easiest hole basically on the pga tour it's a par five and basically a par four uh so jason day definitely a guy who i think will continue to do some really good things uh another guy that just a slightly down the board there tied for 10th ludwig oberg this guy, talk about driving the ball like a stallion. Last year, in his limited 11 starts, he basically had the best driving exhibition of anybody in the history of the PGA Tour. His total driving stat was better. It's a combination of distance and accuracy. He was better than anybody ever. So Ludwig Oberg is an amazing, amazing guy. Hits the ball just dead straight, rolling the ball in. This is his first trip though, around Riviera. So, uh, you know, maybe a, a little unfamiliar with a couple of the nuances, but Ludwig is a guy that uh, everybody should definitely have. And he's three under par. I, I think he's going to move up that board pretty good tomorrow. Steve, that last little nugget would have been something I would have liked to have had yesterday because I had Oberg over speed today as well. Another dumb pick from me, but I'm going to make it up to everybody tomorrow. Now, Zach says here, tell me what you like if you like this one, uh, Steve. Can't lay over JT. The way that can't lay played today, the obvious answer is, oh, yeah, we've got to take that. The one thing I've learned, Steve, and you've been out there with the best stuff, you went toe to toe with Tiger Woods. Very few people can say that. When you go day to day, what's the hardest thing about back? Backing up a seven under round with another good round, especially when the guy that you're betting against has been hot. He's inside the top 15 in the FedEx Cup for this year already and shot a one over par 72 today. Because to me, this looks like an obvious play, but I know that it isn't. Talk to me. Well, when I look at JT, who shot one over, you're right. He, he is as hot as anybody, uh, but he's going to be playing. He's with Tiger. He's going to be playing kind of later in the wave there where which you know we we kind of think that that is going to be a little bit more difficult of a spot uh Patrick Cantley he te he's going to be in the similar spot so he's only a few groups ahead uh, of of that uh of that JT pairing there with Woods so um yeah but but following up a great round when you shoot 64 uh, 7 under par you, you know, when you go out the next day and you're even par through the first 8 or 9 holes you really feel like you're over par mentally because of what happened the day before. And sometimes that can throw off your psyche a little bit. So, uh, you know, I, I expect JT, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty close one. Cantley is definitely in a good spot here. Uh, I, I like Cantley because he's got all the things going for him. He's got his coach that lives in LA who's going to be right there watching, guiding him a lot. Jamie Mulligan is his name. Joe LaCava is, uh, is his caddy as well, who's won around here a couple times with Freddie Couples back in the 90s. So uh, I think Patrick Cantlay is still going to keep inching ahead. Uh, JT's going to have to play a pretty good one tomorrow. And, and again, we know he doesn't quite do that with Tiger. I think uh, that, that's going to be a tough group there uh, for JT to really succeed in. Funny story. Uh, years ago, because I'm a really good friends with Joe LaCava. And when Tiger had those two years off, and people don't realize Tiger tried to get Joe LaCava to leave him years ago because he didn't think he was ever going to come back and be healthy and ever play again back in 2014, 2015. And we got matched up by a friend to go out and play a round of golf. In the first nine holes, I didn't want to ask him anything. I didn't want to ask him anything. And so he kept asking me stories about who I worked with at ESPN, you know, Chris Berman and all these guys. We get to the turn and he goes, hey, man, I'm, I'm really I'm really sorry. But, you know, I've been asking you all the questions. You have any questions for me about Tiger, please. Feel free to ask anything. I literally, literally peppered him with questions for the next eight holes. But we get to the 15th hole, Steve, and I kid you not. I was in the left side of the fairway. I had like 115 in. I, was, I said to myself, I may never 
get this close to Tiger Woods ever again. So I said, hey, Joe, do you mind if you just talk? Pretend you're my caddy right now and just talk me through this shot as if I was Tiger Woods and I got to pick a club. He didn't even miss a beat. And he goes, well, Tiger, you got 115 here. Now you got to slope here. And he pulls out his yardage book, a fake one. He starts looking through it. And he goes, you want to hit it to the right side of the green. It's going to feed to the left. It'll go under the hole, and you should have six or seven feet. Believe it. Let's go. Clapped his hands like that. I felt like I was on cloud freaking nine. <laughs> now, I topped it into the gunch in front of the green. But, hey, it was a magic, magic moment for me. It really, really was. Uh, it was a magic for me. Beautiful. Um, so at DraftKings has some uh, matchups up right now. Finau over Matsuyama, minus 135. I wouldn't touch that. Uh, Hoygaard, Hostler, wouldn't touch that. Where did I go with my two shot there? There we go. Let's go back to the two shot. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I lost Steve. I lost Steve. Hopefully he'll come back in. So here's some matchups uh, for tomorrow. Hoygaard didn't play bad today. Uh, Bo Hostler has been playing really good, and I think a lot of people uh, don't realize how good he's been. That's why that matchup is minus 110. I'd stay away from that. Uh, Harris English, JT Poston. Now, JT Poston is a guy, he shot under par two. If you're looking for a good matchup there, Poston minus 135, I would play that. Because English, English shot over par today, and Poston has been fantastic. I believe three top 10 finishes already in 2024. So I would... Uh, play JT Post in there by uh, a minus 135. Cameron Young against Victor Hovland. Now, Hovland at one point today got it to four under par. Cameron Young has, I mean, let's face it, he just hasn't been playing good golf. Um, and it's one of those situations where if you, and Steve's trying to get back in, we'll see if he pops back in right now. I uh, apologize for that. Uh, let me text him real quick. I will pop you in. This is the beauty of going live, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, get back in the link. <laughs> uh, hey, at least we went live for about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, he said he it wasn't me. I didn't knock him out. Uh, his chrome froze on him. Um, we got Cantlay. You mentioned it. Zach minus 120 over Justin Thomas. And Spieth minus 110 over Oberg. I'm not going to make that mistake again. I'm not making that mistake again. Tomorrow, I would probably play speed. And here's the thing. If you guys are handicapping yourselves, and I always tell you all the time, do you want to do the work? Think about this. Ball strikers paradise. But it's cold. It's windy. And the later they play into the afternoon, the more difficult it's going to be. Ah, there's our main man. There's our main man. He's back. He's back. He's back. Hey, I wasted 12 minutes of your time, and you dipped out because of Chrome. We're even. I call that even. <laughs> Call that even. <laughs> All right, done. So we were just going over some some plays for tomorrow, according to DraftKings, and I said one play that I would play is JT Poston minus one thirty five over Harris English. What do you think about that matchup? Poston over English. Uh, I I like the way JT Poston is playing this year. Uh, I really think that uh, that JT is uh, he's probably the better JT right now. Honestly, it's uh, you know he's he's done some really good things on the greens. Had a few top finishes this year. I I, I like where JT Poston's game is. Uh, you know he might get it done a little bit more on the greens. So, but I still like I still like what he's doing. The game of musical caddies continues on the PGA Tour. Steve Cameron Young's got another new caddy because Tom Kim has his old caddy. And today at one point he was plus four. We did get it back to plus one, but DraftKings has a head-to-head -head round two. Victor Hovland minus 135. Excuse me. Hovland shot a minus one today. He had it to minus four at one point, so kind of stumbled me in because the back that played much, much harder. But if I was to play that one, I would definitely lean into Hovland. What do you make of that one? Yeah, I, let's see. What did Hovland shoot today? I'm looking up. Uh, he was – he, okay, so so 70. look, I, Cam Young's been playing pretty well. I think that that, you know, he, he rebounded a little bit, which is a good sign. I mean, being four over so early was, uh, you know, not the greatest start. But to finish the way he did on a back nine that was playing tougher statistically than the front nine, I think that that's a pretty solid uh, feeling. So he's going to have some good vibes going into tomorrow. But Hovland – I think Hovland is just overall a, a more dominant player. He plays that left to right game on this golf course, probably better than Cam Young. 
Uh, Cam Young might uh, have a little bit advantage of distance off the tee, but this course isn't crazy long like a Torrey Pine. So uh, I think Victor Hovland would be uh, a better pick there. And let's remember, Hovland, when the conditions are tougher, remember he made his debut in the U.S. Open at Pebble Beach, played great there. I just think he likes playing in difficult situations where you got to lean into your ball striking, and that's what this course is. So if I was to give you two plays right now for the driving the line DTL universe, I would say J.T. Poston over Harris English and Victor Hovland over Cameron Young. And I wouldn't mind the can't lay over Justin Thomas. I just I'm, I'm scared of J.T. I know JT can go scary low, especially when he's pissed off. Uh, interesting one here before we get out of here. And we're going to be here every single night this weekend right here. And I promise it'll get better and better and better as I learn what the hell I'm doing. Uh, Jason Day made a comment after the interview that the Greens didn't get bumpy in the afternoon because of the smaller field. Could this be a storyline this weekend, Steve? Well, they say there might be some rain this weekend. If the Greens get softer... It might get, uh, they're definitely going to get a little bumpier, but they had some firmness to him today. So yeah, if, look, if he, if he feels like they were pretty good, I think maybe the wind might've been more of a factor than the bumpiness of the greens in the afternoon. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the greens actually held up pretty well. And so, uh, if they can keep the rain away, they, they'll maintain their firmness and their smoothness. All right. Well, it's getting late here on the East Coast. It's 9.38. We'll be here every single night this week at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Turn on your notifications. I promise you we'll start on time. We actually did tonight, the <laughs> next time. But this is what we're talking about in the Driving the Line universe. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. Driving the Line after dark over on the premium side. We're going to do this on the free side. We want all of you to understand that this is where we want you to be. You're part of the family. And we're going to grow this into the biggest thing in America. We need to share the show, share the link, like it, all that kind of stuff. Final thoughts, uh, Steve-O, as we head into round two of our third signature event of 2024. Yeah, I think the final thoughts really are just getting get out there and uh, we'll we'll see if, you know, we do have a small cut tomorrow. Uh, there is, a, you know, they cut it from 70 to the top 50 and ties. And then they're going to go really, uh, there's also a 10-shot rule. So anybody within 10 shots of the lead, even if you're not inside that top 50 and ties, you will keep, make it to the weekend. So uh, I, I think that that's a, a story. So hopefully you're not going to be one of those players out there that that uh, doesn't make that cut because there might only be, you know, 10 or 12 players that that don't play potentially, depending on where that lead falls. So uh yeah, just don't be one of those guys. Hopefully we see Tiger throughout the weekend as well. I, I want to see uh, you know him compete and get those reps that he desperately needs and uh, you know to get those feels back. Yeah, he's talked about playing one time a month throughout the year and all the majors. So we'll see if this is his once, then maybe the API or the players. And then, of course, we know what comes up in April, and that, of course, is Augusta. But DTL Golf will have you covered all the time. We're going to be going live uh, all the time here at night for the big events, maybe even the small ones. We love doing this. Me and Steve, we could talk golf all day long. <laughs> all right, quick preview of tomorrow's morning show. No, we're going to have some special uh, bets on All-Star Weekend. We're going to talk about the three-point contest. We're going to talk about Caitlin Clark. She became the women's basketball all-time leading scorer tonight for Iowa. We'll, we'll give her some love in the morning and also round two picks on Driving the Line at 10 a.m. That's going to do it for us. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us tonight. For Steve Scott, I am the coach. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time, and tomorrow night right here for DTL Golf nighttime. There's only one. There's only one. We'll see you. Have a great night. See you.